also here is Serena Dank. You are youth counselor for and founder of Parents of Punkers. You are also from California. Yes, I am. I've done some talk shows and um, all over the country, and I found out that it is happening everywhere. And what happens is, um, when I first met Robbie, Robbie was rejecting everybody. She rejected her family. She rejected the schools. She rejected everybody around her. She was extremely hostile. And that's how she digested the message. Robbie is 16. That lady said that uh, we're not responsible. We take care of ourselves. We, a lot of us work. A lot, it takes a lot of guts to do what we're doing, to walk down the street and be ostracized by the Could rest I of society. Could I ask you something? How old are you? I'm 24. You're 24. How do you think a 14-year-old digests this? How do you think I feel when I get at least two or three crisis phone calls per day where Ursula's son comes home with his head split open, where Ursula's son has his hand broken five times I'll, in I'll one tell you month, what I think of that. cigarette burns I'll tell you what I think of arms. that. I think uh, they got bad parents. That's what I think of that. They feel, and they're upset at the suggestion that because they're in the punk rap movement, they're going to mutilate themselves or commit suicide. But I would like to just say to the audience, take a look at these kids. Do you think a 14 or 15-year-old will reach it to this age if they start at 12, 13, and 14 years old? Why shouldn't you then encourage me to get the kids back together again with their parents? Why because don't you guys go out there and... You're not, trying to in, you're not trying to get them back together with their parents. You're trying to get them to be just like their parents. I just went to a club on Friday night. And when I walked in, I was in a fairly good mood. When I walked out, I was so angry. What happened was it was just body to body. And while I was standing there, I was um, just innocently looking you know, around, whatever, and I got beer shot in my face and obscenities. Good. <laughs> right. uh, you say good? Well, it's there being a spectator and to pass judgment, and we don't want it. Stay away. Wait, who, who doesn't belong? Uh, parents whose worst fears have been realized have turned to a psychologist who's made relations between parents and punks her specialty. She deals with parents and kids who were frightened and hurt. Her name is Serena Day. People have this vision of groups of parents getting together and trying to stamp out punk, which is not true. Parents of Punkers is a group of people that get together, uh, discuss ways of coping, of understanding, um, information and it also involves the teenagers it's not just the parents I wish more parents would call me who um, who wanted to know to understand even if their child is not into it to just have some idea of what might happen what to look for um, so that they're not so they're not shocked when their kid comes home with green or orange hair. I think at this point, nothing faces me anymore. I've seen everything. Um, I don't get shocked by anything. I'm concerned continually. I'm very concerned. I think that's another reason why I hang in there is I want to see these kids survive this so-called phase. At a large punk concert, what it is is uh, there is freedom to violate anyone else's body space, but you're not free to punch someone in the nose. You're free to, you know, flail around and. That's Pogo not and whatever. true. Absolutely. I've been to punk concerts. And three weeks ago, a young man that I know very well came home. He was beat up by 15 punks and spent the entire night in the hospital I'm not being saying repaired. It's I'm not saying it's violence-free, and that stuff happens, and they're always... Uh, it continues to happen. Particularly, particularly there on the left. There are no rules in a punk concert. There There's are no rules in life either. Yeah. I mean, you can get beat up. Hang on just anywhere. a second. Miss Dank was talking about how, you know, one of her clients were beaten up by 15 punks, okay? I've been beat up by 15 jocks. I've been beat up by, you know what? A, a jock, a jock is what? A basic American athlete yeah, male. Okay, you can't classify things like that with punks. She says, you know, she saw, you know, punks in the corner throwing sticks. Haven't you ever seen other people being obnoxious? I mean, punks you are people. Miss Dank, I want to say to you, I think you're doing a marvelous job because Bridget the gap is communication, and that's where it's all about. You can be you, and you can be us. What is the difference between, for instance, uh, punk and, let's say, hippies? I would think the only uh, similarities are that um, it's something that kids turn to. Uh, it's something that you know you could identify by dress. You can certainly tell a punk, and you certainly could tell a hippie. The major difference, I would say, is that uh, there has been more self-violence whereas the hippies were you know, on a bandwagon to stop the war and uh, they wanted the future generations to survive. Uh, the message of punk, a lot of it is uh, there is no future. We probably won't survive because of the nuclear bomb.